change the title, I guess. What is this? Wake up with me. Number 31. Over a month now, every day. So today is a play day, so we're going to do some quizzes and get our brains ready for some pokers. Uh, so let me go ahead and mute this, and we're going to jump right into the quizzes. Uh, they got five new ones up today. You can see they add so much stuff every day. So this is an online 5K tournament, meaning the buy-in was 5K. I play for guarantees of 5K with a $10 buy-in. <laughs> Um, but it's fundamentally sound. And anytime you see Jonathan Little, I don't care what buy-in he's playing, you can apply what he does to every uh, tournament buy-in level. It does not matter. It's so fundamentally sound. It's amazing. Looks like the stacks are 63,000. Uh, that's 126 big blinds effective. Uh, 25500 Yeah, that would be 60 or 126,000 or 126 big blinds. Let's get into it. <clears throat> Here we have pocket queens in the hijack seat facing a raise to 1100. Should we fold, call, re raise to 3200, or re raise to 3800? So, of course, um, it's a shorthanded, or it's a, uh, a shorthanded table. We're missing one player, and this player's range will be stronger, but you know what? We have queens. We're never going to. Uh, uh, just call here. Uh, the raise should be uh, pot, so that's 1100 plus R1100 is 22 uh, plus uh, 90 is about 1000, 32, 34 uh, plus R call would be 44 for a true uh, pot size bet. But I'm going to go ahead and make it 3,800, which I think is reasonable. I think we can back it off a little bit because of the strength of our hand and our positional advantage. 32 might even be okay, uh, but the stacks are super deep, and I kind of want the pot to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go the extra blind higher. Really, the only way I would ever consider calling here is if I am very... So I overbet it. ...confident that the initial raiser is super tight. This is a spot where you typically want to three bet your best hands, and Queens is definitely one of your best hands. So let's make it 3,200. I don't think we need to make it 3,800. I realize we are playing kind of deep stacked, but Wait typically when I'm in. Wait a minute. I got gypped on some points. It gave me zero. I said 3,800, and it gave me zero here. Hang on. Hang on. I, I should be getting more points for that. What the fuck? I think the, I think the only play that gets you a zero here is a call. Hang on. Hang on. We got some shenanigans here. going on pokercoaching.com oh we may have had an issue all right come on here we have pocket we queens go. raised to 3800 really the only way i would ever consider calling here is if i am very confident that the initial raiser is super tight this is a spot where you typically want to three bet your best hands and queens is definitely one of your best hands so let's make it 3200 I don't think we need to make it 3,800. I realize we are playing kind of deep stacked, but typically when I'm in position, I'm making it about 3 to 2.75x the initial raise, whereas when I am out of position, that's when I would make it a little bit bigger, like 30. And I know that I should just take a little bit extra off the pot bet for uh, being in position and the strength of our hands. So 3,800, definitely an over bet. 800, maybe even, even bigger to like 40, 4,300 when we're pretty deep stack like this but in position i think 3200 is very nice gets back around to the initial raiser who calls flop comes jack 10 2 should we check bet 2200 bet 4600 or bet 7200 so this is interesting because the bet sizing is not right where i'd be um Typically, you're going to bet one-third pot with most of your hands. Problem here is, is that we have what is known as a marginal made hand, meaning we have one pair and we've capped our range at one pair. This is a very draw-heavy board. Uh, I think it's very unlikely that we are beat right now, but it is very likely that we could get beat on later streets. So that means we don't want to bet one-third pot. I think one-half is uh, a little bit too low. A little bit over that is okay, but personally, if I'm betting this pot, I'm going about two-thirds, which 
uh, well, what's a third of this pot? Well, 10% is 760 times three is 2,100. So 42, so wow, look at that. So I guess the answer is 4,600. I don't like it, I think because of all the draws, I think I would go a little bit bigger. I think I would go about 54, maybe even 58. Just because if there is a draw, I don't want to give them the just wrong price. Like, I think this is the just wrong price to draw at a uh, straight draw or a flush draw. Uh, but I I want to charge them a little bit extra. So when they make that mistake, it pays off for me more. So I think my bet is around 54 to 5,800. I might even touch 6,000. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with um, 4,600 here because I think 72 is just a little bit too big. This is a neat scenario where in a cash game, I think we definitely just want to bet the vast majority of the time. But if you think about the opponent's range, this flop actually should nail his range pretty hard, right? He's going to have a lot of hands like jacks and tens, which would definitely call the three bet, maybe even twos. He could have Jack-10 suited, for sure. So this is an interesting scenario where Jonathan Little has strayed away from GTO, and he's got to the exploitative nature of this hand. Uh, I absolutely love when he does this. It shows the next level beyond GTO. So there certainly are some nut hands available. However, there are also plenty of draws available too, right? So in this spot, since I really don't want to get check raised, I think in a tournament setting playing deep stack, the right play is to just let it go check, check, call a turn bet, call a river bet in most scenarios, unless it runs out kind of poorly. Um, that said, I do think betting something like 4,600, just basically betting our best hands and our draws is fine. And I think this hand is at least fine enough to bet. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't think we're, we have a weak hand here by any means. But I think if we bet and get raised, it's miserably bad. If we bet and get called, we could still be in marginal shape. Uh, so I I don't hate checking in this spot. I'm either. So maybe removing the first street of betting is the play here. This is kind of like having ace king, and the flop comes off you know, king queen or ace king or sorry, ace queen jack. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't bet right at that flop even if you three bet because you could be up against ace queen, ace jack, pocket jacks. So this is kind of a similar scenario where. You're removing a street of betting so that the pot doesn't get crazy bloated and then you can call a turn and river bet um, based on the opponent's opening range and lose probably 50-50. If the, per if the opponent bets turn and river, uh, we're probably going to be beat about half the time because they're going to have hands, like he said, like jacks and tens. I don't think kings is a possibility. Aces is a possibility. Um because a lot of players don't four bet aces ever. Um, although it depends on your read of the player. Uh, personally, in this situation, especially out of position, I would be four betting the aces and absolutely kings. Uh, jacks and tens, I would probably, yeah, I'm probably going to flop here every time with jacks and tens and see what develops. Uh, not so much that I'm really convinced I'm up against queens yet, but more so because. You know, if I four bet and the player has ace king or even ace queen, they're going to call. And being in position when a bad flop comes for me, if the flop comes queen high, I don't know if the guy has ace queen or ace king, and then I still have to check it to him and face aggression. Or if an ace hits, you know what I'm saying? So the ace is more obvious, though, of course. Um, so I, I definitely agree with the checking, and uh, this reminds me of a spot I had a couple of days ago where... I was so locked into the flop bet because it was working about 95 plus percent of the time in this tournament that uh, I had one of these and my plan was to bet the flop and bet it fairly large and then check the turn. And the problem is, is that when I'm making the initial bet, I've made the bet larger because of a board like this where there's over where I have an over pair, but it's a very draw heavy board. But my brain immediately went to protecting against the draws instead of there's a lot of scenarios here where you're actually beat. So maybe checking the flop is better. That way when the villain will lead turn a good percentage of the time, they're going to lead smaller than my flop bet. Like if my flop bet is like 6,200 here and I get called and we check the turn, well then on the river, you know, there's 20,000 in the pot and the villain is going to bet 15k. And if no more overcards or, or draws came out, I'm going to have to call it, which means the pot cost me about 21000 
if you check this flop here, on the turn, the villain, let's say he has a set of jacks, he's not going to bet as big as I did on the flop. He's going to bet smaller. He may bet around a third, maybe a little bit more on the on the on the flop. So we're talking 22, 2300. Uh, let's say it's even three thousand. Then we can comfortably call the three thousand. And then there's only thirteen thousand in the pot. And if he goes for a bigger bet on the river, it's only nine thousand uh, somewhere in there. Let's even say it's ten thousand. Then we call the ten thousand. We've only lost thirteen thousand on the pot in a scenario where it was very risky for us versus. 21,000 on a pot because I maintained the betting lead instead of checking the flop. So I like this one a lot and I'm glad we found this one quickly because that other hand was kind of puzzling me for a few days. Now it didn't end up mattering. Uh, I ended up betting the flop. We checked the turn and then I bet the river and, I, and the guy just folded. <clears throat> but I think looking back, it would have been a perfect scenario to check the flop and then let the villain bluff at me because in the end, he did just have a draw. So the player bluff flop or bluff turn and bluff river. And that would have made me more than betting the flop, checking the turn, then betting the river because he never called a river bet. You know, if he tries to bet the turn and I call it, then he bets the river and I call it, I make about double what I made on that hand. So, yeah, this is an interesting uh, wrinkle that I'm probably going to be integrating immediately. Like, this is going to come up in today's play, and I am playing today. Uh, so... Yeah, I like it. So, all right. I'm going to check or I'm going to bet using a relatively big size, like 4,600, like I would do with a decently strong polarized range. Typically, you want to be checking your marginal made hands in most scenarios, right? And this hand is definitely a weak premium hand for the most part, but it certainly could fall into the strong marginal category. So I'm cool either way between checking or betting something like 4,600. This time I let it go check, check, though. Turns a seven, and the opponent basically pots it oh boy should we fold call raise to two to raise to twenty two thousand five hundred big number or should we go all in interesting so this is never a set i don't think um there is a small chance that this is a hand like eight nine that just turned the nuts and just looks like nothing but again, I don't think players bet that strongly with the nuts or conceivable nuts. And a set would be the conceivable nuts here. Um, there's also an element of freak out here where the player could have kings or aces and want to just get the money in now. All these scenarios are not great for us to raise. That being said, there is something here to a player overprotecting his hand. Because let's say he has ace-jack offsuit with no club in his hand. We check the flop. We could easily have ace-king suited. Easily. And we're going nowhere in this pot. So he knows that. And with ace-jack offsuit with no club, you absolutely want to either kill this pot now or preferably when this player is not going to draw or is not going to fold for a huge bet, you want to go right to the size of the pot so that if he calls, he has made a mistake. Now, versus the exact hands, calling here would be a good idea with ace-king suited because you'd have the gut shot, you'd have the king for the over that doesn't, you know, hit his ace as well. You'd have this, you know, you'd have the flush draw. So you'd absolutely be calling because you'd have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 outs. So you'd have 30%. So you'd be getting almost correct odds. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is, you have to win this one, one in three times, uh, almost correct. Uh, but then again, if the, if the river comes off, you know, a king or a queen, we can easily bet and I think get paid by the ace jack, honestly. Uh, I do not like raising here. I think this is a call all day long. Now, that being said, Jonathan Little is far more knowledgeable than me. He may have a greater insight. And since we've already kind of strayed from the GTO program early in this hand by checking the flop, uh, I'm not 100% confident. But I think this is just a call here because... A calling also allows our opponent to keep bluffing. So if he has the ace king of clubs, let's say, he might just try to kill it based on his equity. You see that a lot. Uh, where if we raise him, he can happily get the money in. No, he did nothing wrong. But now if we call and he bricks the river, now he's forced to bluff at us again. And I think, you know, an offsuit card like a five of diamonds here, I think it makes a pretty easy call on the river, even though he's going to be betting fairly large which would be about, eh, there's going to be 23K in the pot. 
uh, I think a, a, a river bet would be about 18, 19 K. I think it's fine for us to call that when the river bricks, unless we have a very specific read, but uh, I'm going with call here. I alluded to this a little bit earlier where really the plan is to just call turn in this scenario. Oh, look at that. I, I, I did. <laughs> I totally forgot. He said that. And I, I learned it already <laughs> where we were calling turn in river you know, and then call a river bet. If he bets again, unless it's just a really bad river, like a nine or an eight of clubs, especially, um, I mean, look, I realize he's potting it. That's pretty unfortunate. The opponent's definitely going to be pretty polarized here. But a lot of players will... Polarized, meaning nuts or nothing. Perceive, uh, conceivably bet in this scenario with a hand like ace-jack or king-jack. Just trying to price out ace-king and ace-queen and king-queen, right? So we do have the best hand a decent amount of the time here to the point that we can't fold. So we're definitely going to continue. The question is, do we raise? And I would definitely not raise. Because if we raise here to either 20... 2,000 or all in, the opponent's just going to play very perfectly, right? I mean, I guess he may get it in with ace-jack, but that's about the only hand that I beat that he's going to be happy enough getting it in with. Yeah, I think the only scenario where I'm happy to get in these last 100 blinds on the turn or 120 blinds on the turn uh, is in a super low tournament or a progressive knockout with a medium or lower buy-in because, you know, there's other incentives for the player to go ape shit, and it would have to be early in the rebuy period. You know, if this would have to be near a starting stack. Uh, for us to be doing that. So, uh, very specific. Play. And obviously, he could have us beat here with jacks, tens, twos. He could also have sevens. He could also have nine, eight suited, right? There's not just plenty of hands the opponent could have to the point that I cannot realistically raise this hand. So, this is a call, but um, it's going to get dicey on some rivers. This is a reasonable river. Opponent checks. If he bet, by the way, I would just call. I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna say it's impossible for the guy to have Ace King here. He could also have random King Nine that decides to bluff. He could have Nine Eight that, deci that decides to value bet turn plus River. So if he does bet River, I'm just gonna call. But now when he checks, we have to decide if we should value bet or just check it back. So should we check, bet eight thousand, bet sixteen thousand, or bet twenty four thousand? So I'm torn because I just learned a new move and I kind of want to use my new toy. Uh, and it was on a Jonathan Little quiz where this is pretty much the best run out we can get. Um, there are hands like 8-9. Yeah. There are hands like King-Queen. Yeah. There are hands like Ace-King, but it's rare. Like, he just bet the turn huge and then checked the river to us. I think specifically you have to have the Ace-King of clubs for that. That being said... This is a scenario, I think, where I would try to induce a bluff. Because I think there's more... I think there's more scenarios where the player checks a super strong hand and is so rarely up against a monster. Uh, like, the monster here is me having ace-king. And again, I would specifically have to have the ace-king of clubs. Now, let's say the player has pocket aces with the ace of clubs. Am I getting here with an offsuit ace-king on that after that turn bet? No... So, I believe he'd be willing to check raise a small bet. That being said, I don't think I want to bet 24K ever for value. Because if we get raised, we just have to call it. Uh, because we have been priced in. And a player could have a hand like pocket jacks here. Um, I think personally, I think because of my new move, my new toy that I want to play with, uh, I want to bet about 8,000. Now, the standard here is to bet about 16, and then if you get raised, just fold. But I think I want to bet 8,000 because it induces a bluff. It takes it to another level. So I also think that ace uh, or that 8, 9 will only call the 8K because I think that's the one hand that the 8, 9 is worried about is the ace, king, specifically of clubs. Uh, so they, they, they can't raise if we bet. So if we bet 16,000, they have 8, 9, they're just going to call anyway. If we bet 8,000, they have 8,9. Still, they're not going to raise. So I think I like inducing the bluff here. And it makes sure that we get paid widely too. Like hands like Ace Jack and King Jack couldn't definitely call a third pot bet on the river. We lose some value when he has pocket jacks and is just a scaredy cat. But I also think pocket jacks is in that range of hands that would check to induce a bluff and then raise it.
And then if that happens, uh, I think we just call the river. I don't think we're ever rejamming the river. So I'm going with 8K. I could be overthinking this hand. It could just be 16K standard. But I think 8K is fine. I think we have a hand that's good enough to go for value. This is a pretty reasonable spot for us to have Ace-King, even when he does blast the turn. Um, so I definitely have some nut hands here. And I think the opponent's range is generally going to be a lot of hands like Ace-Queen, which can call a bat. King-Queen, which can call a bat. Uh, I didn't consider that. The top pair on the river can call a larger bet. So the bet's 16K. Ace-Jack, which you know may call a bet. Jack-10 suited, which... We'll call a bet. Um, sets, jacks, tens, two, sevens. Those are all call a bet, right? So there are a lot of hands that are very strong that will want to call a bet here if I do make a bet. And I don't think the opponent can realistically raise me all that often here because I can just have some straights, right? So this is a situation where I definitely think we should be betting. We're trying to get called by a reasonably strong but like non-premium hand. I don't think we want to... That being said, my value bet would have been a little bit more. I probably would have gone about 18 uh, but I like to push the edge of the value bet. Like, I don't have enough experience in these larger ones to say what the best bet is. But for me, I think 18000 Overbet. Because I think an overbet will start to get all the jacks to fold. And he may even fold out a hand like ace-queen if he has it. I know he doesn't have a lot of ace-queens in his range. But they can still have that some portion of the time. Um, if I pot it here, like, even jack-10 may fold. Because, like, you have to realize this is just an atrociously bad river for the opponent. Um, for the most part. So this is a spot where uh, they can't really raise me all that often, and their range is going to be mostly seemingly strong hands, but if a lot of money goes in this pot, they're actually not all. Meaning sets, if all the money goes in, he knows his set is no, is no good. Even jacks is no good. Two pair, good enough to call a bet, not good enough to raise. Eight, nine, not even good enough to raise. Like, this is the worst run out this hand can have because even the clubs... Like, if a queen of clubs comes on the turn and he has 8-9, it's even so much harder for him to call a bet. So that might be the case for the small bet there. Can we play? That's strong. So I think we want to bet something like 16,000 here, and I would expect to get called a lot of the time. If he did check-raise me all in, wow, that would be annoying. Um, I guess I would fold. Because if you think about my range, again, I'm going to have 9-8 suited sometimes, king-9 suited sometimes. Notice king-9 suited had a double gut shot on the turn, so it would have called, right? Um, I'm going to have ace-king sometimes. I didn't even consider the king-nine. So, it's true, though. King-nine well suited would here. raise this pre. I, I may be folding, over-folding a little bit if I fold this to a check-raise, but I think 16,000 is pretty nice. And like I said, the opponent really just isn't going to raise all that often because I'm decently well-protected by having straights in my range. So we go do 16,000. I don't want to go smaller. I realize a smaller bet like 8,000 may get called by ace-jack and king-jack a little bit more often, but I think you'd rather just get full value from the two pairs, sets, and... Um, queens yeah i overthought it and opponent does call and he does have that set notice i bet the flop Ooh, this would have been nasty i would have bet the flop he probably would have raised i mean i would have called and not folded so he would have gotten it in pretty bad but opting for that pot control line allowed us to play a medium strength hand when we were way behind right so um i think you're gonna find in general in tournaments going back to the flop here this is a spot where you definitely want to just ask how can this spot go horribly wrong and the way it goes horribly wrong is if we bet and get raised. And in exchange for giving up a little bit of value and giving up um, you know, the chance to build a pot and protect our hand against various overcards, we're going to induce some bluffs. We're going to get our opponent to overvalue some worse hands like you know, ace-10 or whatnot. And also, we just don't go broke when we happen to run into the nuts like we did here. It's a very tournament thought that I don't keep in my head often enough. Which the thing to remember about tournaments, no limit tournaments in particular, is that one hand can can eliminate you, uh, you know, or at least cripple you. It is no limit. So, I usually ask on flops like this. I go through a thought process in my head of, okay, what does my range look like to the opponent? What does the opponent's range look like to me? What's the best way to extract value when I'm good? Am I getting bluffed? The the question that I fall short on is how does this go bad for me? And I do consider jacks and tens, but I didn't consider deuces, which is completely reasonable. And betting the turn huge, I did have the fleeting thought of, well, a, a set of sevens would absolutely bet huge here because they just improved and the hand is completely hidden and it's just as likely as any other set. Um, so, yeah. 
and Deuces is going to go for a big bet on the turn and then a relatively safe river, like a board pair. They're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, pump it on the river. But when a queen comes off, man, that's like the worst card because we can also have sets of jacks, tens, you know, uh, queens, obviously, and all that other kind of shit. And the, the Deuces, while strong in a set, not strong enough to really compete with a raise at any point. So we pot controlled the flop, he bet the turn, and then pot controlled the river. He went for one big street of value, which you see that as sets a lot. And it's medium sets. Deuces and sevens make all the sense in the world. So uh, I got to start asking myself that more. How can this go badly for me? The the trick with playing the micros and, and low stakes tournaments that I'm at right now is not leveling yourself. Like you have to make a lot of bets a lot of times in a row uh, where... If you started thinking about it, you would not make those bets. Uh, so it's a good thought to have in the back of my head. How does it go badly? But I don't want to keep it at the forefront because I'll just slow down with too much aggression. Now, in a $5,000 online buying event like this is, maybe that question becomes question number one versus, you know, question number four. Uh, so interesting stuff. And I think the next one is by Jonathan as well. So. In this hand, you're playing nope. an $88 tournament, 50000 guaranteed, with Ace of Diamonds, Queen of Hearts. So this is the $50,000 guaranteed $88 buy-in. I believe that's the long car uh, poker tournament right now. So if you ever see him online, Ferris Bueller, that's his name. Really great player, really great guy, very entertaining. Hearts under the gun. You have 9,994 chips. Blinds are twenty five fifty with an ante of six. Pre-flop, do you want to fold, call, raise to 100, or raise to 140? It's so early, we're going to go way more than double. Uh, honestly, I would probably go 150 or uh, 200, uh, but 140 is just as good. I Honestly, if you just want to fold this hand, I hate. I agree. Ace, queen, offsuit, full ring, under the gun. If I did not feel as if a lot of tournament players are just there gambling and maybe... But it's so early, and it is an $88 buy-in, so you're not going to run into too many like crazy just-take-a-call kind of things. There is an old uh, strategy that Eric Lindgren kind of pioneered uh, back when he was WPTing, which is he would take his original stack and flop more in position. Uh, he would take about 25% of his chips, and he'd be willing to lose that before going to a proper tight aggressive range, which back then was GTO. Um, and he would do that to put himself in a position to crack big hands. Uh, so, you know, if he's in the, uh, you know, cutoff or the hijack here, he's going to be calling you with, you know, anything suited, connected, you know what I'm saying? And just looking to play you off in position or make a big hand against your one pair and, you know, crush you. Um, interesting story. He had a book, uh, Making the Final Table, that he wrote in conjunction with the WPT. And this was, I think, the year that he won, like, four events or something and was just king of the world. And uh, he wrote that book. I ordered it. Uh, I got it in the mail. And then uh, I was playing every day. And then I woke up one day. Uh, I got the book in the mail. I read the book. Took a day off of poker. I read the book immediately. It was very. It was. It was only about three hundred pages. And uh, I read the book. Made some notes. Reread a couple other things. Woke up the next morning and played a tournament and won the first tournament I played. And I was literally integrating his method, which at the time was truly revolutionary. And I still do it to a certain extent in lower buy-in tournaments. Um, but it's not as effective now because of the smaller bets pre-flop. Like normally, like back back in those days, somebody with ace-queen under the gun, they would have made it 3.5 or 4x. And in those situations, the pots get huge. So when you crack those hands, you get paid. You know, and you're, relative, you're risking, you know, 200 chips out of 10,000, you know, so be not thinking through their decisions as much as they'd like because they're thinking about the big cash instead i just mock this in cash i just mock this hand a lot of the time yeah. depending on the table if you are going to open it though it would be preferable to not play a big multi-way pot so you'd go a little bit bigger to get hopefully just one caller or two callers and that way if you both make pairs most likely yours is superior but if you play a big multi-way pot one pair of tight pants tend to go down in flames if the pot gets big and this hand only makes big pairs but uh anyways for the rest of the hand i'll explain our decisions after we're done with the entire lesson so we can make it 140 uh we get three bet 
uh, by this gentleman here. Uh, we don't know a single thing about this person. It's like the beginning of the tournament. So actually a fun situation that comes up a lot. I, I'd really be curious as to what you guys are going to answer here. So here, do you want to fold, call, raise to 1,250, or would you like to raise to 1,555? thing to remember before moving on on this tournament is that uh, Assassinato is a fucking genius. Um, and this is a higher buy-in than I'm playing typically um, online. You know, 88 bucks. I've, I've played a bunch of these, but, you know, right now my bankroll doesn't really allow for it. Um, so, personally, like he said, I don't like Ace-Queen under the gun. Um... But it is early in the tournament. Uh, players are going to 3-bet with all pairs here from this position because they do have a lot of chips. Um, that being said, I think if I'm playing this tournament with an $88 buy-in, I mean, I probably would have satellited in at this point right now. Um, I'm probably just going to fold this uh, because under the gun, it's, you know, it's so bad. And, you know, there this is a full nine-handed table. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I like the fold. Um uh, but, and here's the thing. I'm going to go with my answer. Even though I know the quiz is going to continue, I want to go with my answer. Uh, I think what he's going to say is the move here is to 3-bet small, to retake control of the hand and define the, the hand. Uh, but then again, calling also. I think it's 50-50 between calling or raising to 12-5. Uh, but I'm going with my answer just because I want to review this hand again later and I'll have it marked as one of the hands I screwed up uh, versus his perspective. So I'd rather just go with my answer. Let's go ahead and call here for now. The board comes ace-jack-6, uh, 1,177. Best answer, call. Seven in the middle here, would you like to check? Would you like to bet 295? Would you like to bet 589? Or would you like to bet 883? Fold, second best answer by a hair. You know what I'm saying? Meaning it's 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 almost as good as calling here. Raising makes no purpose. I was overthinking it because it was assassinado. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to bet here. If we are beat, we don't want to inflate the pot. If we are not, we want this player to bluff at us. So let's say they have pocket queens. You know, uh, they might bluff at this pot and then we can pick them off. So I'm checking. We you go ahead and check here? And he bets 858. Here, would you like to fold, call, raise to 1,858, or raise to 2,858? I think we're rarely vulnerable if we're not beat right now, meaning, like, I don't think there's a lot of flush draws out here, like king-queen suited, I guess. Uh, but three betting an under-the-gun opener from uh, under-the-gun plus two, I don't think king-queen's doing that. I think, honestly, I think you're calling. I think king-queen offsuit might do it. But I don't think I think King Queen suited may just call because it's that strong a hand, and you want to see a flop. So because we got three bet pre flop, I think we're more than likely up against, uh, you know, Ace King's very possible. Uh, but I think we're more than likely up against a hand like Queens Kings, even tens. And this this bet here can be probing, but those hands check back a lot. So I think a lot of the times you're going to see this is King Queen suited. Uh, or some other hand uh, that's equally strong, or that's equally strong pre-flop that is now screwed. Uh, Ace-Queen suited is one of those two, and also Ace-10 uh, suited is also one of those. Like, uh, only suited because they're three-betting pre-flop, but then on this flop they don't love it, because Ace-Queen suited uh, wasn't helped by this flop, because we have the Queen of Hearts, so they can have literally, uh, and the Diamond's there, and the Club is here, so they can literally have the Ace-Queen of Spades only if it's suited. So very few combinations. It's the same deal with the ace queen of or ace ten. They can only have the ace ten of spades, um, or ace jack. So ace jack's really the only real one that crushes us. But I don't know if you bet this big with ace jack here. So I'm going with call, and I'm going to continue to allow the bluffer to bluff. We call here, and the turn is the two of spades. Here, do you want to check bet seven hundred and twenty four? Bet 1,447 or bet 2,170? I will say my turn leading range is not proper. I'm studying that position now. Uh, I've spent so much time on the small blind and big blind in the last two months uh, refining my actions that uh, 
my turn bets out of position have not been great. They're better from the small blind. Like if I was in the small blind in this scenario, I probably would have been three betting, but let's say I didn't. Uh, I might lead the turn here, but I honestly, again, I, I think if we're beat, we don't want to inflate the pot. So I'm just going to check. We check, and the turn bet is 2,170 here. Would you like to fold, call, raise to 4,850, or move all in? We're calling. I mean, we're getting what we're looking for. Just best worst hands bluff at us. Best hands don't get it all. All right, everybody. Ooh. So let's break this down. Now, you don't know anything about this person, period. So just take what you do know, do what you can with what you got to begin with, and we'll break this down. So pre-flop raise is fine. We get three bet by under the gun plus two. That is a very early position three bet. The three bet sizing is good. Like it's good sizing. Uh, this is somebody who knows a little something. And people who know a little something tend to be a little tight aggressive. So, but anytime you're making a big call, a great question to ask yourself just to clarify things in the moment is, does he do this with X? And X is the best hand that you beat. Now, that doesn't negate the fact that he could be bluffing, but it, most people don't bluff enough. So we should just start with the value hands. So the question becomes, does he do this with ace-jack? That seems very unlikely. Does he do this with king-queen? That seems unlikely. Certainly most people would not do that. The field tends to struggle with bluffing. The field tends to struggle with three-betting. So, okay, you do have enough equity here to call preflop. That's, you're very deep here. If you make her an ace or a queen, it's very likely to be good. And people tend to not double barrel those boards as a bluff. Now, the board comes ace, jack. Yeah, that's where I screwed up. Uh, if he's bluffing, he's not going to bluff the turn. He's going to bluff the flop, check the turn, then maybe bluff river. Uh, so the turn, we should probably be folding or going all in. Uh, check folding or going all in. Six, and he fires. Now, if you pre-flop flatted... You have to call here. He could be following through with, you know, kings without a club, queens without a club, just trying to buy a river. The sizing, though, does make that a little less likely. This, again, does he do this with X? Does he do this with ace-10? That's the best hand you beat. That seems very unlikely. I think he does this with ace-queen suited. Ace queen, you know, of spades is there. Even some players will three bet the ace queen off here. I don't think it's unreasonable under the, uh, playing uh, under the gun early. It's kind of off, but a lot of times you're just going to see ace king here. But there is a factor of ace queen suited specifically raising here and then betting the flop big. Uh, but then again, they're checking the turn, so our turn call is not good. Play uh, ace jack as you beat, ace king as you beat. It seems uh seems pretty hairy. Aces obviously has he be kings or queens, especially with a club, you'd think would check back a little bit more. And if he yeah. was trying to buy a turn in river, you'd think he might bet a little bit less. So you do have to call here because if he's just got zip and pip, a lot of guy a lot of these guys you'll see this at the beginning of the tournament. It's like I'm really revved up to play. Yeah, and then that's what you know, I was the guy thinking. three bets, he C bets the big card board, and he gets called, and he goes, crap. Because probably he's got an ace, and probably he's not folding. And that's the card you would not be folding an ace on, and then he fires again. Yeah, it's a fold here. And this is like, let's go for stacks. It's, uh, the, the next bet is going to be all in. Yeah, this is a three bet. So what you'll see a lot of people do, let me tell you what you don't want to do here. You don't want to shove because the hell with it. You see a lot of guys do that, which is, I don't know where I'm at, but I, I can't fold this hand. Fun fact, if you don't know where you're at, do not go all in. <laughs> That's rarely a good play. Uh, there are specific instances where I've seen it where the combinatrix of the deck have made it more likely that I get a fold even versus the best reasonable hands. Uh, but those situations are one in 10,000. I can't fold this hand. It, like, yeah, this hand tends to be the best hand. That doesn't mean it's the best hand 100% of the time. It might be the best hand 80% of the time, 90% of the time. 
if I were making a wager as to what situation that 10% of the time is where it's not good, it's probably when under the gun plus two, three bets large and decides to triple barrel down. Right. That would be my guess. Uh, you're completely forgiven for raising preflop, calling on the preflop, uh, calling the flop. Here, you got to start making decisions for stacks. This is not kings or queens at this point. No. This is not that many bluffs. In every club combination you can think of, that's only one combo. And also, does he realistically expect us to fold an ace? This is very unlikely to be a bluff. And if it is a bluff, good luck to him because most people won't do this at the beginning of the tournament. Just fire off for everything. You don't see that that often. If we're going to fold, if we're going to make a big fold, look, this is the way you make money at No Limit Hold'em. Let's go through all the options here. So pre-flop, you shouldn't 4-bet because he's either got, he's either bluffing and you want to get that flop bet from him or he's got the nuts and he's going to really like the opportunity to raise it again. So the call is fine. If you said full here, that's fine too. Here, if you wanted to donk lead and lead three streets, interesting, but you're probably not getting worse to call you. And if you check on turn and river, that's okay. I have a weak pair or I have a missed flush draw. Please play accordingly. Let's try to avoid that here. The check call. We don't want to check raise here because we might help ace king to fold, right? So we're not, uh, that's pretty much the only hand we might be bluffing. And if he's fast playing like jacks or aces, like we are, we are in deep doo doo. And ace king probably isn't folding. And I don't really know what we're getting value from. So we call. And here, donk leading looks a lot like please don't fire again. And we can't really follow through on the river and expect to get called by much worse. Yeah. And this sizing, this size up, like this is for stacks. This yeah. is. He's saying. This is some. He's saying this is for stacks because if we call this, uh, it puts about 7,000 in the pot and we're only going to have about uh, 6,000 left. So the last bet is going to be for all of it. So he's right. I didn't pay as much attention to the geometry of the betting. Um, but yeah, I think this is one that in game, especially, I would have folded. Um, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I am saying that uh, it's kind of early. <laughs> That's why we do wake up with me's. Uh, so I definitely think I probably would have played this one to call preflop, call the flop, fold turn. Because anybody with kings or queens is going to check the turn. And honestly, in that scenario, there's even no reason to bet the river. So I'm looking to call one bet on the flop, check the turn, and then call a river bet. Because somebody may think, you know, well, I'm going to bluff the flop. And then when I got called, oh, shit, this guy could have an ace. And then when the river comes off like the four of diamonds, you know, it, it's so innocuous that we just check. And I think I take a couple extra seconds to check just because the timing will throw people off. And uh, then they're going to say, well, I'm going to try to bluff with my kings and queens here because he obviously has a hand he doesn't love. But for the hands that I don't love, this is the top of the range. Um, I can't honestly think of another hand that I would raise under the gun that I would call a three bet, call a flop bet, check a turn bet when it goes check, check, and then on the river, not lead, because I literally don't have a bluffing range here. Like, my my, my lead range on the river is ace-jack or a set. Uh, it has to be stronger because we have to conceivably, if he has ace-king, we have to get called. A set, absolutely, I would lead, and I would lead fairly large on that four of diamonds river if I had a set of jacks or sixes, because... Ace King calls us all day. That's the flop. The pot controls the turn. Goes, oh, this guy could be turning his hand into a bluff on the river. I can't raise it, but I can absolutely call it. This is the exact opposite scenario where, because we're out of position, our hand is the top of the range where I'm looking to call flop, check, turn, call river, uh, but not call turn. Turn, turns a fold. Someone gambling that you have an ace, very unlikely this is a weaker ace. Uh, very unlikely this is a bluff because bluffs tend to not work on two Broadway boards. So, again... It's a good side note to remember. Bluffs tend not to work on double Broadway boards, meaning the ace-jack on the flop, there's not a lot of bluffing going on here. 
just because those hands are in such the range of three betting and four betting preflop, the hands with aces and jacks in them, you know, hands like ace jack, pocket jacks, ace king, ace queen, you know, uh, even mm, on some scenarios, you know, uh, the ace queen offsuit four betting, but that's getting a little particular. Um, but like he said, you don't really want to bluff the boards that obviously improve the ranges. So, you know, an ace is fine. A jack is fine. But an ace and a jack is so bad to uh, turn hands into a bluff on because there's going to be enough to call. If you had ace jack here, you know what I'm saying? This bluff on the turn doesn't work because you're too improved. And if you, you're up against jacks or aces, it's just too bad. You know what I'm saying? But you're not supposed to be good enough to fold ace jack in this scenario. In this scenario, if he bets the turn, we're calling with ace jack. River comes off that innocuous four of diamonds. We're check calling it all off just because there's so few hands that actually beat us. Aces and jacks. Sixes do not four bet or do not three bet from under the gun plus two this early in a tournament. It's never going to happen. Um, I'm not going to say never, but it's not going to happen. You know, it's going to happen one in 10,000 times when you see this raise pre flop. So it'd be a hell of a coincidence that if the one in 10,000 times somebody did three bet you with pocket sixes, they flopped a six. Because then you're talking a hundred, one in 120,000 times your ace jack is beat here uh, in that scenario. The way you make money at No Limit Hold'em is when you have the best hand, you thrash the other guy and get as many bets as possible. When most likely both of you have missed, you tend to be the guy who comes down with the chips. Right. If you can do those two things, you'll be fine. If you can keep getting hands heads up and hammering people when they have their weaker pairs and get the 10, 20, 40 big blind bets post-flop, get them to fold on the flop or on the turn when they have nothing... You're going to do fine in No Limit Hold'em tournaments. And the way I see everybody end their tournament is this way. Yep. I don't know what's going on, Yep. so I'm going to invest all my chips. It's because like, if you call here, the shove is coming. That's the thing. And they know enough to know that the shove is coming on the river. So they're like, well, if I'm not going to fold anyway, I might as well get it in. I only do that if I have a set here. If I have a, a set of jacks here or by some miracle a set of sixes, which could happen, it's early in the tournament, I might open it under the gun. It is reasonable to open sixes. Fives is the fold line. And we're not going to just limp under the gun. So I could have sixes here. Uh, this bet on the turn, I'm probably getting it all in. Uh, because I'm not 100% sure that I'm good, but the odds are very much in my favor that I'm up against ace-king um, or ace-queen or, or, or even ace-jack. Um, that since I'm not folding the river and checking with a hand as strong as a set isn't good to do on the river, I'm going to go ahead and pile it on the, on the turn, and you'll be amazed how many times you're going to see somebody call you here with ace-king uh, when that should never call. Almost always. And a lot of people, they call here, and I go, what percentage of the time do you think he checks back river? And I go, they say, oh, like 10 20% of the time. And it's like, well, are you folding on the river? Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, so we're just calling off like 40% of our chips to fold? That's the thing. If it's so rare that this player is checking river, like they said, 10, 20% of the time, why the fuck are we calling the turn? You know what I'm saying? If 90% of the time we're going to be playing for all our chips, why not just fold now and save the extra 2170? You know what I mean? Uh, that's exactly right. And uh, I I remember the day that I had that revelation uh, I was actually playing live at Harrah's and I started folding more turns and I had been kind of in a break even period for a couple weeks and I was playing a lot of live poker at that time. Um, and I kind of was like, well, he's not going to fold the river. And I, and he had bet the guy had bet something. We were playing one, two and our stacks were about 300 at the start of the hand. And, uh, this is a similar scenario that happened. Not this exact one, but the guy bet the turn for like 70 bucks and, I was like, I have 250 right now. If I call this, it's going in on the river. I'm just going to fold. And uh, I will say you never want to show this when you fold because some players will misinterpret, the, misinterpret that as you don't fold anything but, or you don't call with anything but the nuts. So when you fold this one, I think this is a good time to just go, well, guess I'm not bluffing you this hand and just fold it. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, oh, he just didn't have crap or whatever. Eight times out of ten, that doesn't seem like a smart idea. And if they do call off on the river, which they do do a certain percentage of the time, well, you kind of ble beating an absolute bluff and you have no idea what's going on. And when you have no idea what's going on and you just put money on it, that's called gambling. 
Remember what I always say. You never want to rely on the deck. You want to rely on your control of the hand. You know what I'm saying? So gambling is when you're relying on the deck to bail you out. What's our best card on the river? An ace or a queen? An ace still kind of fucks us. A queen is kind of really good for us because we're up against ace-king a lot. But you're relying on the deck, and that is gambling. We're not trying to gamble. We're trying to play poker here. That's We have more control than that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you want to make the chess analogy, which everybody seems to love to make these days, you know, Kasparov didn't go into his matches with uh, uh, Yurtsen or, or Fisher, you know, saying, well, I don't know what I do here, so I'm just going to go ahead and make a spaz move and see how he responds. Uh, doing pretty good, Punisher. Good to see you. Yeah, Nike, this is a really well-reviewed hand, and that's what you get with a Sassanato. I like the way he does the... I don't like it for everybody, but the way he does it where he doesn't want to give away the hand, and he just goes, okay, well, this is what we're doing here. And then at some point through the review, and he did this with three moves left to decide, he was like, we're going to review it at the end. And I like that for him because his thought process is so all-encompassing that it's better to just make our decisions and then see why he has a difference of opinion. So I fucked this one up actually in the quiz, but in game I don't think I get this wrong. If uh, you don't know what you're investing in ever, you shouldn't invest in that's poker, real estate, business, anything. Precious metals, crypto, what, it, what? If you don't know, you don't know. That's okay. Such a common thing I see with players who are trying to get to the next level is when they don't know they they jam. And players who are not even to that level yet, when they don't know, they call. You know what I'm saying? Because players are really afraid to get bluffed. I will tell you, after years of playing in hundreds of thousands, probably over a million hands online, I will absolutely tell you, I know it's over a million hands because I, I had a year, a couple years ago, where I played over 700,000 hands. Um, I will absolutely tell you, and that was in one year, I will absolutely tell you that the mark of an of a next level poker player is when you don't know what's going on fold and it kind of reminds me when i was first playing poker if i didn't know what was going on and i was just like uh what are the hand rankings there's a moment of purity when you first learn poker and it's a very short amount of time where you go i don't know what's going on here i fold very quickly after that you see new players who, who haven't really thought about the game at all, but have played it a little bit, they start going, I don't know what's going on here, but I call. And those are the hardest players in the world to beat. And that's why stickiness comes in at such a higher level of you know being sticky to boards when you're getting bluffed. It becomes a much greater thing, but also there has to be a stark dividing line between, I don't know what this guy's doing, I call, which we saw one of those in my latest uh, YouTube video, the first hand of... Uh, uh, Jedi Mind Tricks number six, where I don't know what this guy's trying to accomplish, and I had a pair of threes, and there was four over cards and a one liner straight on the board, and I ended up calling it because it was like this doesn't make sense, so I call, and the guy was bluffing, and I sniffed out the hero call, um, and he bluffed the turn in river, um, but there's a fine line between that feeling of I don't know what's going on, so this is a call, and. I have no fucking idea what's going on. My cards are not good. I fold. Like, that's the dividing line. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference in I don't knows. That's uh, that's all right. And I, I think the only maturity I ever had ever when it came to poker is there was a time when I was much younger and I, where if I didn't know what I was doing, nobody could make me play. And then at some point I thought, oh no, everybody's getting one over on me. I can't just fold these top pairs and stuff. And that's when the pain started. Yep. You know, be, they don't, you don't ever have to play a big pot ever. Only you decide when you play a big pot. If you don't want to play a big pot, you don't play a big pot. I've had some ones even recently as a couple days ago. I think this one's over now. Yeah. As recently as a couple days ago where... I had a great hand and I was like, this pot's going to get too big at this point in this tournament. This is not worth playing for and just folded it for crumbs because it was like, I could see that throughout the hand I was going to end up playing a big pot and I was only 50 50 on whether or not I was going to be good. And that's never what you want for the majority of your stack. So love assassinato's reviews, really great in depth th thinking and uh, fun stuff. And uh, let's jump to the next one. Who's the next guy? 
All right, in this hand, we have Matt Affleck. Seven offsuit in the big blind. We're playing about 40 big blinds effective. It's going to fold with a small blind who just completes. Should we check or raise to 11,200? Two thoughts here. Uh, we have, what is that? Uh, 32 plus 16 is 48. That's 15 blinds at 48,000. So we have about 35 blinds here. Um, the player in the small blind has a ton. We have position. I don't like reopening this betting here. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't like reopening this betting here with a hand that plays well post-flop. 10-7 suited would play much better than 10-7 offsuit. So I think for those reasons, we absolutely can three bet here pre-flop, or we can raise here pre-flop. I think having the betting lead is important when in a pot that goes limp limp check our opponent's going to lead at us a lot of the time so i actually like a three bet here but i think this three bet is a little large no it's about three and a half. Ooh, god this is next level blind play that i've been studying so much our hand is too bad it's too bad to call but we're already called so do we want to raise Oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. You know what? You know what? It's a quiz. Let, let's use the tools we have. We don't have these in-game. Let's find the range. So uh, let's, let's use the tools we have. So we're going to go to the tools. We're going to say we have about 35 big blinds, right? Uh, or it's probably more than that. Let's, let's use all the tools. Let's use the fucking calculator. So we have, uh, what is that? 269,000, let's say. A, don't do that. 269,000. Uh, divided by 3,200, obviously, if we were playing in big blinds. 84, okay, we have way more than I thought. I did the math really wrong. Oh, that's right, there was five, five divisions, not four. So 84 big blinds. Okay, cool. So we have a ton. Uh, that's kind of a different scenario. So tournament preflop charts. Oh, I was thinking of it as three, 32,000, not, uh, yeah, that's funny. So we have 80 big blinds. Our position is the big blind. Go to position. Big blind. Actions versus a limp from the opponent's position. Small blind. 10-7 off suit. I'm right. You're supposed to raise here the majority of the time because the hand isn't good enough. But look at this. 10-7 suited. It's a call half the time and a raise half the time because the hand is so much stronger. So I'm going to go with my initial overthinking and uh, raise. So you can mix so and check in general. general. What the fuck? I'm, get, I'm getting double echo. Uh, uh, board, board, if we were deeper stacked to fall to a range, range bet. bet. Is he echoing? Let, let's go ahead and reload this and see if uh, he's echoing. You might get a bad audio here. All right, in this hand we have 10-7 right. off. Raise. So you can mix so and check in general on a uh, disconnected board. board. If we were... It just jumped to the next quiz. This one might be bugged. Let, let's go back to the quizzes and see if we can get this to reload. It's playing two quizzes at once. That's weird. I've never had that happen. So we'll just we'll just reload it from the start and uh, we'll see what we'll do in here. So 10-7 uh, by uh, Matt Affleck here. All right, in this hand we have 10 7 off. So let's raise. So you can mix so and check in general, general on a uh, disconnected uh, board. If we were deeper stacked to fall. This, turn, this uh, quiz is bugged. So unfortunately, Matt, we can't play your quiz. Uh, it's bugged. But I think we found some good value there with looking it up in the tool section. We're supposed to raise there two thirds of the time and just check one third of the time. So uh, yeah, let's go back to Gripst. Just a bad quiz. Hello everyone, Evan Jarvis here for PokerCoaching.com. Today we are reviewing a tournament hand. What's the wow? The uh, the raising preflop or the the bugged quiz? <laughs> you know, it, 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 I'm pretty proud that I actually knew that it's a raise the majority of the time. And like I said, suited, it's totally a check because our hand is much stronger. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to bluff much. Oh yeah, the bugged quiz. Yeah, the bugged quiz is hilarious. I've never seen that. It just started playing two quizzes, the audio from two quizzes at once, and it actually jumped to another quiz that Matt Affleck was doing. So something got funky there. But uh, 
I like this definitely. The uh, this is the Falls View. We've had a lot of hands from Grips run in the Falls View tournament, the twenty five hundred. Uh, obviously, he did very well in it. Um, but uh, I love Grips because Grips is very uh, solidly fundamental and alive. I would call you know I think he's on the circuit enough that I would consider uh, Grips not to just be an online pro, which people downgrade, but it is a higher level of play. Um, but he does have the nuance of playing live. So he gives us a lot of information on his quizzes. So let's see what he says. From the $2,500 buy-in WPT Falls View event I played earlier this year and made a decent run. In this hand, we have Ace-King offsuit in the small blind. And the action is a cutoff open from Marlin, who you'll recognize from previous quizzes. A three bet from a lady to 4,200 on the button. And action is on you. In the big blind, with a nice covering stack, what should you do? Should you fold, call, four bets to 10,800, go all in? I hate this. He's giving you two very good pieces of information. Marlin, uh, what's a marlin? It's a big fish. <laughs> so, blah. you know, this guy could be doing anything. Um, that being said, we don't want to chase him out of the pot. I don't think he's four betting very often. Uh, or three betting very often when we just, or, sorry, four betting very often when we just call. The piece of information that we have here on the woman on the button is two things. She's on the button and she's a woman. And not to be sexist, but women do have a very different way of playing poker. Typically, you'll see women have a much tighter, aggressive style than even some of the best male players in the world, meaning that their range is tighter but their aggression is higher. So her raise on the button, we can discount a little bit because of her aggression factor. But I think when she raises on the button, we can definitely give her credit for a decent hand, not just a move. Like this isn't stack position hand. This is position hand stack. And you can see she she's using her position but I think her hand is the most valuable thing here. So I think she's got a good one. So I fucking hate this um, because Ace-King is screwed out of position here. That being said, it's way too good to fold. So I am going to call. Uh, if I believed 100%, uh, she, so she has a pair. Yeah, but here's the thing. Let's say she has a pair, okay? And let's say the first guy, the opener, is going to fold when we jam. So then she calls us. So then what are we looking at? We're looking at a race versus a pair. 45-55 classic, right? Because she doesn't have, you know, fives and call us, right? So I think her minimum we're going to go is nines or tens plus. Oh, tens plus. Um, in this scenario. But I think, you're, I think, Punisher, you're discounting the fact that she can have all the premiums. And standard, we cannot. Because uh, we're not going to have aces or kings here in jam right? So when we jam, we're going to get called by, I think, nines plus, because she knows we're not jamming with aces or kings or queens, and it is a four bet. Uh, so I think the worst hand we're ever going to jam here is probably pocket jacks, uh, because I think even queens would sit there and go, you know what, let's see a good flop first. Uh, kings, I think you're going to have to play for a bit of a trap. Maybe you four bet smaller, but you don't put her all in immediately, uh, I think with the ace-king here, I don't like reopening the betting and allowing her to five bet because she can do that with pocket queens and then we're just getting pushed out of our equity. So I really think the move here is the call. I really do. As much as it sucks. And when we're out of position, as a standard rule, you want to be calling more than uh, uh, raising versus an in-position player like... If we were if if we were in the big blind and the small blind had opened, then we want to be raising. You know what I'm saying? Because we have position. But we're out of position here. We're going to be calling with Ace King a lot more from the blinds than you than you'd imagine. Like even Marlin opening in the cutoff. If we know he's just an absolute utter fish, uh, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, I should raise now and get as much value as I can because he's going to call me with all Ace Ace Queens Ace Jacks. Or there's another school of thought that says this player is so bad if he's bad aggressive. We want to just call and let him bluff into us. And I've made some amazing ace-high calls with ace-king versus the ace-jack that ends up bluffing me. But I think this is a call all day long because of this lady. Plus, she's only got 50 blinds behind. If we 
four bet to now 12,000, probably more because we're out of position. So 15 K and it gets back to her. Do you think she's calling this 15 K or is she going all in? She's going all in. Personally, I would also be worried since I'm on a draw for betting. What would I do to a shove? Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, people have this phrase in their heads that originated uh, in the uh, early 2000s. Ace King is just a drawing hand. We have learned that is not true. Uh, it is not just a drawing hand. It is a hand with a good draw, but Ace King is also, it's a debate whether Ace King offsuit is the same as Queen's preflop. It has a lot of showdown on its own. So while it is a draw, how often do you get it in here versus Ace Queen? And you didn't improve your hand, but your Ace King wins. So I, I don't like I don't like that thought process of Ace King is a drawing hand because it isn't. It's also the premium blocker hand. When we have an Ace in our hand, it's much less likely someone else has Aces or Kings. You know what I'm saying? When we have the King in our hand, so there's way more to this hand than it just being a a, a, a drawing hand. And when I am at a live tournament, and this happened in one of my last live tournaments that I played before I quit that because Corona was you know the Delta variant was coming up a couple months ago. Um, there was a guy at the table who kept saying ace king's a drawing hand and he never three bet it even because he didn't get it and it got so annoying to me and I was in my mode of I'm better than all these players so I hold them all in high contempt that eventually I just started three and four betting him all the time and when the board missed I could I would look at him and say you got ace king again huh and he'd go yeah and I would say well you got a drawing hand, and I would just bet, and he would fold. And like five times, I showed him I had nothing. And he, because he was being a dick, and eventually I eliminated from the, him from the tournament. He tries to shake my hand, and I went, go fuck yourself. And uh, it was almost a thing. We almost <laughs> we almost kind of squared up. But And I told him at that point, I said, go fuck yourself. And by the way, Ace King's not a drawing hand. You're a fucking drawing player. And he walked away. <laughs> so it's a funny story, but uh, I don't want to be that aggressive. But the, the truth of the matter is, the hand has a lot of intrinsic power to itself. It is not just a draw. It's not like 10 jack. 10 jack's a drawing hand, man. Like, you know, that's a hand you want to flop and draw with. All right. So I'm calling. Ooh. I see some players flat call here. Uh see, this is where Grip's live bigger buy-in tournament experience trumps everything i'm thinking i'm very interested now um with the intention of keeping in the worst aces that she's a lady maybe three bet bluffing with or even yeah. three betting for value with such as ace queen and also keeping in those worst broadway cards king queen queen jack uh, king 10 possibly if yeah by by just calling it it uncaps our range that's we don't look like we have ace king when we just call etc and all those reasons make sense for flatting with this hand. The only issue with flatting Ace King in the in this position is uh, once we call, Marlin's going to be very likely to call here, and it's pretty tough to realize our equity um, in a three-way pot being out of position. Okay, good point. Because yeah, because then we need to hit a we need to hit an Ace or a King, and again, that's relying on the deck to win us the hand, so we lose too much control. Yeah, I over-focused on the woman on the button. He's right. He's right. Because then if the ace or king doesn't hit the flop, now what happens? We just check fold? And we've given up one of the better hands in poker? He's right. to three bet all day. And 10-8 is the three bet because Marlon will fold, she jams, and we don't mind racing for her total 27,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucked this one up. Uh, also with a range that's fairly face up. When we cold call here, our range looks pretty much like jacks, queens, and ace kings. So uh, both by being face up, being multi-way, and being out of position, it's going to be tough to realize our equity. So for those reasons, I don't really like a flat call with ace king. Here. Given where the raise and the re-raise are coming from, these are late position players. Um, they're definitely going to have worse hands than ace king a lot of the time. So folding here is a little bit too tight. Uh, which leaves us with the options of four bidding to 10,800 and moving all in. Um, four 60 blinds, it may seem like a fair bit of chips, but... Here's the thing, moving all in, uh, the problem here is the 54 blind stack. 
if he jams, we're just getting snapped off by, you know, aces, kings, queens all the time. But if we three bet, he's going to fold hands that may snap us off. And then we're gambling like jacks, queens, things like that. But if we three bet to 10K, he's not necessarily going to four bet those. So he'd be put in a position to play perfectly where he should never fold the queen's preflop, but he will not five bet them preflop. So interesting uh, because he doesn't know what this lady's doing. And uh, yeah, so we're looking for the fold here and then the jam here and that we call easily. I, I was too focused on, uh, you know, these stacks and uh, they, they are comparable, but there's a small difference here with the positions. But moving all in is okay here. Uh, we're just going to take down the pot at a pretty high frequency and when called. Uh, we're going to be flipping mostly occasionally dominated um, and occasionally we may get the same hand to fold. Uh, it's a pretty decent result when there is 6,400 in the middle at a 500 big blind and that represents about 20% of our opponent's stacks. Um, but I think the best option here is for betting the 10,800. It gives us the best chance of getting the pot heads up with yeah. uh, she's a lady. If it goes... And because it has another effect of if we jam and Marlon decides, okay, I'm going to call, I'm not going to fold jacks here, the lady will fold. But here's the thing, if Marlon folds, the lady's more likely to call. So it gives us... You know what I'm saying? Because she's not going to overcall unless she has just a crushing range. When we when we four bet to ten thousand, Marlon could sit there and go, "Ooh, these these pocket tens have really shrunk on me now." You know, or pocket jacks have really shrunk on me, and he might fold. But if he calls, and she has a hand like pocket queens, she'll then jam, reopening the betting, which allows us to then go over the top and play perfectly getting Marlon to fold his pair or ace queen or something like that, then we're heads up getting well more than 45% equity in the pot at just such a great price. So the three bet is far superior, or the four bet is far superior here than a four bet jam. Goes five bet shove by Marlon and call from this lady. Perhaps we can consider folding ace king. Yeah. Uh, and also this allows us to have our best hands in our range as well, our aces and kings, uh, and maybe even a couple of bluffs uh, where our... Those hands stay in our range of possible hands because who the hell is jamming aces here for 174 big blinds, 60 big blinds effective approximately? Who's doing that? Nobody's doing that. So when we three bet, our range, our hand can look even stronger. So good point. Risk is much lower than it would be if we move all in. We four bet to 10,800, about 2.5x uh, the three bet. And we get flatted by the player on the button. Yeah. Flop is king of spades, seven of clubs, five of spades. The kind of board we're looking for when we have ace king in a four bet pot. Top check, 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 check. Action is on you. What should you do? Should you check, bet 6,000, bet 8,000, or bet 12,000? We have smashed this board. And uh, not for nothing, but uh, if we were uh, <laughs> if we were four betting pre-flop, just talking a lot of smack, you know? <laughs> <laughs> then this would be a bad board to bluff at. Uh, but we're checking here all day long. All day long. This is about as good as it comes for us unless we just get quads. You know what I'm saying? Or a straight. Uh, even holding the ace of spades, it's so fucking brilliant. So this is a check all day long in my book. I'd be curious if betting 6,000, right? Or, well, eh, you know what? It's probably 6,000 is too small. Betting 8,000 one-third pot. Uh, if that's the move and then checking the turn to convince a pair of queens that they're good. But honestly, the lady's got 34 blinds left. There's less than a pot size bet in the flop. I think I just want to check here because it's going to be very easy to get that money in. And we're never folding here. So I'm going to check. You probably notice that in this spot, all the bet sizes offered are quite small. And that's because we don't need to bet big to get all the chips in by the river. Uh, there's already 24,000 in the middle. Our opponent only has 18,000 behind. Uh, that's less than a pot size bet, which means if we're going to try to get all in uh, by building this pot up with bets, we can start with very small sizes and uh, still be able to easily get all in by the river. So if we are going to bet, I think the smaller, the better here, um, just to give our opponent odds to potentially peel with some weaker float. Um, Give them an opportunity to call with a hand like nines, tens, jack. Here's the wrinkle that I hope he says. 
if she has queens or jacks here, when we check, she might immediately turn her hand into a bluff. I've seen it a hundred times. Checking these flops. This was one that was also Jedi Mind Tricks number six, by the way. You should all go watch it on YouTube because this came up again. This was a trapping scenario where I had queen jack and I conceivably have the best hand with top pair. And I decided to check it like I would if I had ace jack because if I have the best pair with ace jack, I have it with, with, with queen jack top pair, right? 90% of the time versus the blind. And I, I, in, I allowed that player to bluff at me and I won a nice pot there. Uh, because if I just bet the flop, the guy, he had pocket eights, and the board came out like 3-4, jack, 9-5, something like that. And uh, I checked the flop when I had the top pair of jacks. I bet the turn, and I bet the river, and this player is out of position. He's just check, call, check, call. Now, when you look at it on its surface, you go, wait a minute. I'm check calling with a pair of eights on the turn because I think I'm good. Am I folding on an innocuous river? You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, I might actually play that after. I'll play it after this one, but I think you guys should all subscribe to the YouTube, of course. And if you haven't seen that one yet, go ahead and check it out. But I'll play that section after this. Jacks or queens that may fold to a larger bet. Um, and the smaller our bet is, the more likely our opponent is to call with one of those hands, even if it's just to call one bet and then fold on the turn. Any extra chips we can get in at this point when we're about a 90% favorite is a really good result. That being said... Uh, because the stacked pot ratio is so small, uh, because we have three streets to potentially get value from jacks and queens, uh, I don't think we actually need to begin betting at this point. Um, if we think about the other hands that she'll call a four bet with that are not paired hands, it's most likely hands like ace-queen suited. And given that we have, and potentially king-queen suited, given that we have the ace of spades, we don't need to be concerned about her really holding uh, a flush draw. Or they're not flush. See, that's where the blockers, this is what I was talking about. That's where the blockers for the ace king are so important. Because look at it. We have ace king suited, right? We have the ace of spades. We're now blocking her having the suited ace of spades. She cannot have it. The king of spades is on board. She cannot have a suited king of spades. So what does that leave for suited hands? Suited spades. What does she have? Okay, the queen. What queens does she three bet on the button and call a four bet with from the big blind when the four when the big blind four cold calls or cold cold four bets pre flop? What suited queens are ever here? There aren't any. There is no queen jack suited. There is no ten jack suited. Those hands are gone. Because they have to rely so much on the board helping them. They're gone. There is no flush draw we are up against here. That is 99.99% of the time. We are never going to be up against a flush draw here. Ever. The only random way we're up against a flush draw is somebody who has exactly 7-8 suited. Because 7-8 suited could 3-bet and then get priced in to call preflop. But even then... You know what I'm saying? Because they're in position. But even then, it's very long shot. And here's the other factor I was saying. You're playing against the lady. The starting hand is going to be stronger. I am more likely to believe she has queens here and will go broke than she has a flush draw ever. I think she goes broke here with queens quite often if we check the flop. Draw here. So with hands like ace, queen, she's drawing dead. And with the other hand, she has two outs. So it's actually a board that's going to be safe enough for us to check. And give her the opportunity to start betting at this pot uh, with a hand that has very little equity. Uh, in the moment, I unfortunately did not recognize that to be the. I love that he says he made a mistake. Best decision and went with a bet of eight thousand. And she and folds. My opponent folded ace. Would she have started bluffing with ace queen had we checked to her here, given her playstyle? Probably not. But it's still always important to give your opponents the opportunity to put more chips in the middle when they're drawing close to dead. Uh, and you have a hammer lock on the hand and no real sense of urgency to build up the pot size because it's already so big relative to stacks. Anyway, uh, that's how we took that one down and increased our stack a little bit more in this tournament. We're going to continue to grind farther and farther into this event, and it's a whole lot of fun. And uh, this has been Evan Jarvis for PokerCoaching.com. I hope you enjoyed this quiz. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Yeah, I like that, uh, Evan talked out the whole hand, and then said, I made a mistake. I want to play that section 
uh, of the Jedi mind tricks. There, there, there's some other fun stuff in it, but I'm just going to jump to that Queen Jack. Uh, I think I have it here. Where is it? I think I have the final cut here. Yeah, I'm going to play this for you guys. If you don't know which one I'm talking about, this is the thumbnail over here. Uh, this thumbnail here. Is that the bigger fish one? No, 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 no. This is a new, new one. That was Jedi Mind Tricks number five. Uh, this is a new, new one uh, that just that I just put out. This is uh, force checking, meaning I was going for force choking, you know, like Vader does. But this is checking the flops. All these hands, there's three hands in here. All of them you check the flop for different reasons. Uh, and I'm going to show you the Queen Jack example. Yeah, I just uploaded this one yesterday. I sense a trap. Ooh. Next move, spring the trap. Is that too loud? Hang on, let me look. Close your eyes. That's a little loud. Hang breathe. on. Breathe. Just breathe. So this is the, this is the, I want to go to the Queen Jack one first. This is the uh, bluff catching one that I was talking about. Uh, let's go to the uh, Queen Jack. I believe it was the, it might have been the last one, maybe the second to last one. Yeah, here it is. So, uh, where do we start here? There's Jack Jack. All right. There's a little funny stuff you'll get to see too. This is, this is only the last like four minutes of this video and I'm going to actually review my own review. So this is kind of meta. So let's check it out. The flop bet kind of gave it away. A subterfuge? No. A confining device? A snare? A box popped up with a stick. You go ahead. Sorry, that is very loud. Hang on one second here. Let me turn this way down. Not often, and I think betting smaller here is better than bigger. I mean, it's, it's one of those weird game feel things. I mean, if we get three bet, it kind of sucks, but... I like the hand in position. Make a jack. I'm always torn on these because I don't have the greatest kicker. If I had ace jack, I would check this every time. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it like it's good. Uh, it's a quick check back. I think if he bets, we can raise um, and then see what we, see what we do from there. Uh, I am gonna bet bigger. I'm gonna bet 60% pot. A little under that, maybe around 55. Different story when I only have 23 blinds been raising. Player calls. Uh, he can have a lot of draws and stuff. I'm gonna bet for good value. It can look bluffy. He may call us with a 9, 9, 10, and such. See how quickly he called? Pocket 8s. Checking that flop did it, man. I just, because there's so many draws out there, it just looks like I'm bluffing. Queen, Jack, Suited. Uh, we go ahead and make a raise in Under the Guns Plus 2. When did this new channel start? Hey, what's up, Eric? Eric interviewed me before I went to Canada years ago. Uh, I've been meaning to contact you, man, and talk to you. Uh... We had a small falling out. Uh, I was I was in a bad place at the time, uh, you know. So uh, I wanted to apologize for that, man. Uh, I we should have stayed in touch. Eric's a great guy, uh, very knowledgeable, and honestly, like one of the best uh, producer guys uh, I've ever seen. Uh, that 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 interview that he did with me was was really amazing and a, a great thing. But uh, good to see you. When did this new channel start? Uh, about thirty days ago. The, today's the thirty first day. Um, I rebranded the channel as Qui Gon Broke, and uh, got away from the flippa thing. There's a there's a lot of reasons there, but uh, yeah, I'm back on it full time, man. I never stopped playing poker, never stopped studying, but uh, uh, stopped streaming for various reasons. And uh, honestly, a lot of it was because of the shooting on uh, October 1st in 2017. Uh, I think that affected me a lot greater than I thought it did. It's actually the last thing I ever posted before I just said fuck it. Uh, but I was pretty bitter at the time, too. But uh, good to see him, my man. But yeah, so you see the way this hand played out, right? And uh, we could go through my analysis, but... Uh, well, let's just listen to it. Fuck it. This is the YouTube channel, though. So, exclamation point YouTube, go subscribe. Because all this edited content comes out. And it, this this video is pretty fun from the end. And there's only like two and a half minutes left. Let's just listen to it. We flop the jack. Uh, player checks. And I played this one a little differently. I figured... It's very likely that I have the best hand. I decide to check it, and I'm kind of playing a trap for value. Turn comes off a nine. Uh, he checks. I decide to go ahead and bet, and I bet smaller than I... Good to see you again, Eric. And by the way, uh, if this 
sounds good at all, it's because of this. This this pop filter I just got, but the mic, this blue Yeti mic, Eric gave me this. And I always kept it in excellent condition, and I think I knew I was coming back to streaming. Uh, but thanks again, man. You're a good friend. Normally would normally have that like 3.5, but I think it's close. But I just really don't feel like my opponent has much. Uh, he does call. The turd comes off, and he checks. And I decide to go ahead and go for a big value. And uh, our friend calls us. And uh, has pocket eights, third pair. If I had bet the flop, right, is he going to call a flop, turn, and river bet? Only if he has a preconceived notion in his head about me, right? People aren't that exer observant, man. Like, even specific reads that I make, they're, they're really not, uh, they're not player dependent. They're generalized. Because he was in the big blind, and he could have definitely three bet here, um, just because there are such a range of hands I'm going to have when I'm opening uh, at this point. But... He decided he wanted to see a safe flop. So then, you know, when we check the flop, he's got to figure he's good, right? Uh, so then he checks, and then I bet reasonably, a little small, but reasonably, it looks kind of bad. Something I didn't say in the video that's actually true is that our range of hands is so wide to open with that this board did not improve that now we bet on the turn, like suited ace of hearts. You know, that's a hand that you don't want to check raise the eights against because it's not going anywhere, like the suited ace king or ace queen of hearts. If he like that's why the check raise didn't come was because he was playing it a little bit safer. We would not see bet that on a one heart flop. Now the ace king of diamonds or something we would see bet all day, but we just might have picked up equity but no value. So betting the turn and setting up a river bluff is what I was going for against this guy. And luckily the board ran out good to do that. Lucky size, you know. Uh, he can easily call. I'm surprised I didn't get check raised here. Now I know he has ace. But, like, what jacks, what nines do I have? Like, I think he's just worried about me having, like, a monster, like a set of jacks, or, like, an overpair. The overpair is not very likely. Um, but some players will check aces and kings on this flop, especially if they have the ace and, you know, ace of diamonds, ace of hearts. So, but other than that, specifically, you know, aces and kings with those two suits, I don't think there's a lot of checking going on in this flop. Even queens, I think, bets. Uh, but but I think uh, most of the time we've walked him into believing that we have a bad hand. I think I actually could have even bet bigger here, like nine and a half to ten big blinds. Yeah, that was my that was my feeling of mistake in this hand is that this almost doesn't look like a bluff. It almost looks like a value bet. Like if I bet nine and a half or ten here, it just looks like I'm trying to blow him off anything and he gets for the hero call and I win a bigger pot. And I think he calls it a greater percentage of the time. But luckily I got gets called. called more often because it looks like more of a bluff. Getting called here by, by pocket aces is just monstrous. And we made a great pot, man. The conceivable nuts. You know what I'm saying? Conceivable nuts. Conceivably, what's the nuts here? A set. And when a set is the conceivable nuts between the hands the players can have, it's not very likely, man. So that's when top pair becomes super strong. You can use a little bit of your brain and then just get a lot of good value. So I, I really like the way I played this one. Um, and I'm kind of proud of it because I'm integrating that checking the flop top pair more often Because if you only do it when you have ace jack here, you're going to be doing it far less often But if I can do it in this exact scenario when I have queen jack king jack ace jack jack 10 Now I'm going to get more opportunities to win more bigger pots and more comfortably win them a prop, it's a prop. So you can see the whole video there. It's got some inner cut stuff of Star Wars, which of course is my my greatest love but uh, that's the thing, is that you see if you only did it with ace-jack, you'd only be doing it 20% of the time when king-jack, queen-jack, jack-10, you know what I'm saying, uh, all those hands can do it. You're doing it literally four or five times as often uh, and winning these monster pots. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm always betting those other ones, I'm never going to win that. So I was very happy with this hand. And uh, let's do one more quiz. We'll do one more. Uh, I like calling because it's suited. If it was off suit, I would probably three bet more often. But I think suited is definitely strong enough to just call. Faraz Jaka is so well thought out at every stage of a hand that you see him do some things that don't make sense till he explains it. But I think this is just a call all day. I'm mixing both here, mostly calling. But if you want to three bet, I think that's reasonable. You can 
can get our opponent to fold in hand like ace 10, king king off, queen jack off. I don't know if they probably shouldn't be opening that in the first place. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> you are really, I'll say, persnickety about uh, production. Uh, can I turn the opacity when you blow these epic vape bombs? I would, but I'm not using a green screen. Uh, I'm I'm using the zoom trick of uh, of the green screen. So my camera's coming from this with just a green screen background. So uh, uh, I would I would adjust the opacity, but uh, it doesn't have an effect because uh, it's just going by depth of field as to whether or not I'm part of the background or not. So like if I do this, you can see that it loses the edges of my fingers. It's because I'm not actually sitting in front of a green screen because intelligently so my wife was like i don't want a giant green fucking screen why don't you just blow to the side in our bedroom i do but it, it oh. you know it just kind of grabs it so it kind of makes it kind of makes me disappear for a second on little parts but uh people, yeah people want to see you that bad uh, people i'm attractive really yeah i yeah. wouldn't know yeah well, well, well. That's why you just follow me around like a dog. <laughs> wow, like a dog, though? I mean, that's not an insult. Why do people think that's an insult? Dogs are great. I love dogs. I've had dogs my whole life. Yeah, but I don't want to follow you around. Okay, like a shadow. Is that better? Okay. How is that better? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what the fuck? I've had a shadow my whole life, too, but I'm not giving it treats and cuddling with it. Well, Although you are on the darker side. <laughs> Say hi to Q. Love her Facebook updates. Yeah, that's Eric. Remember Eric? Oh, hi, Eric. Yeah, he interviewed me. Remember? I remember who he is. Yeah, that's hilarious. But, uh, yeah, so the so, call yeah, here, get, I think, is the thing. Off, basically, Ace Ten and King Queen offsuit, uh, but not not a lot else. But yeah, like I said, I'm mixing here, mostly calling. Small blind squeezes, low jack folds. And it's back to us. Do you want to call or fold? I think my only other thought of three betting this preflop is to discourage the small blind from doing this because this is a very obvious squeeze spot. That being said, the hand does play well enough in position that we can absolutely call. This is another mixed spot where calling and folding are both fine. I'll be done I'm mostly minutes. calling here. We do have position, and we are super deep. The deeper we are, the more um, our position gives us advantage. That said, our queen ten could be dominated by stuff like ace ten, king queen, queen jack suited, uh, ace queen off. All these are hands that might squeeze. So that's why it's not a clear call. But yeah, I am leaning towards call. The main thing I want to point out here is that if the low jack had called this would actually be a fold yeah and I think a lot of people get that backwards where this player calls and they think oh I'm getting a great price I gotta call. yeah if he calls it's a fold because we are so often dominated and uh, we don't even know if we're up against suited you know aces that have our same suit they obviously all ace queens ace kings call us the reason why calling heads up is better is because when we make a pair we're just so much more likely to be good with three players in the pot we're not Oh, by the way, happy birthday, Q. Uh, there is no three in 27. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I love it. Thank you. Courtney, Courtney made a viral video uh, yeah, for her birthday. Views that was pretty impressive. She made a video of her using a sound from uh, Instagram. So, uh, uh, and it's taken off quite, quite crazily. Yeah, it's like 700 on TikTok and 5,000. And I don't even have nobody on TikTok. Yeah, I was going to say, that's really impressive. I don't even use my TikTok. Well, that just means it's getting passed around to people. Like, people are sending it like I send you TikTok videos or whatever. You know what oh, I'm saying? so people are getting equally as annoyed as I do? Fuck you. You love my TikTok curation. Do I? Yeah. Is that Call now. The problem is, once it's starts to call, their calling range dominates the hell out of me. I mean, I got to clarify. Queen 10. <laughs> Whereas heads up, we're just more likely to have clean outs. So um, that's important takeaway there. We call um, opponent C bets here about half the pot. Uh, we can either call or raise to 3,600.
All right, uh, I think this is a very clear call. Uh, I think the small blind uh, raises a lot with queen, queen, king. Obviously, that's the best one. All the ace kings, all the ace queens, stuff like that. I don't think there's a real reason to raise here. Uh, I think calling is good. His half pot bet is kind of telling. Uh, if he bets smaller or bigger, I'd be less inclined to call. Uh, but I think the half pot bet just looks the weakest. Just a straightforward call. No reason to turn a hand into a bluff and raise. Turn is the deuce of diamonds. Do we want to check it back? Do we want to bet 2560 or bet 3600? These are, are tough, tough ones. Um, the, the, the quiz is bugged. It, it, it's supposed to say bet 2560 or bet 3600. Um, these are tough ones because I feel like we're, we're pretty far ahead. Um, the hand can be vulnerable, but really only two gut shots. I think a, a king queen keeps betting, so I think ace queen ace king, uh, those are the hands that check here, and we're gonna let them pot control. I think by checking and allow them to bluff rivers, and obviously if an ace king or queen comes off, uh, it's not great for us. We can still call with the queen, um, but I don't think we're up against ace jack. I don't think we're up against an overpair. I know we're not up against king queen. So FYI, there's a non-zero chance I will make it to the Rio this year. Are you going gonna dominate this year? I have no chance of going to the Rio. Uh, Unless my manifestations and, and miracles happen. Yeah, well, we need a miracle first for the bankroll uh, because the, the channel is called Qui-Gon Broke. Uh, there's a lot of history there as to why I'm playing this small and all like that, but uh, uh, I'm rebuilding at this point, so that's A number one. B number two, I don't think I would go play the World Series live right now if I had a million-dollar bankroll. Uh, you know, I know everybody's vaccinated. I know everybody's checking their cards. I know all that kind of stuff. But people get sick every year. You get a flu every year when you go to the fucking WSOP uh, just normally. And now with the Delta variant out here, and nah, man, uh, absolutely not doing it. Uh, I'm not driving Uber because it's well, too dangerous. Me, right? um, hang on. Go ahead. So there, there's absolutely zero chance that I'm uh, uh, going to the Rio. Hopefully next year, um, but uh, it's going to take a lot of winning and a lot of uh, vaccinations uh, for people and uh, a very uh, a downgrade of the uh, Delta variant and no AV12. Love you. Bye, baby. Love you, too. Have a great day. Well, I probably won't be back till like 10. Yeah. Courtney's going out and doing some nails. There we go. Camera's back. Uh, so yeah, so no chance of that. Uh, I, if I was to go, I would love to be playing the uh, sit and goes and the dailies, uh, but uh, yeah, my bankroll just can't suffer it. <laughs> so I'm checking here. I'm going to allow the pot control. I don't think we kill the pot here versus two overs and a gut shot. So I don't want to bet that big and get committed. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and check. I'm mostly just checking here. Our opponent could for sure be checking better hands be really gross to get check shoved i don't know that we're going to get much value by betting i mean maybe a king ace queen could consider calling that's the other thing what calls us but it's a little hard they got two streets left um yeah it's, it's just a bit dicey so i'm, I'm definitely just checking here's my standard line yeah i was gonna say eric i, I didn't want to say it out loud man but I, i'm aware yeah you're immunocompromised uh, even after the booster shot, you got a month and a half ago. Uh, yeah, it, just not a great idea, right? I mean, not a great idea for for anybody, you know, even of a certain age. But I know you have other health concerns. Uh, Eric's a, 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 a true victim of the American healthcare system. It's really uh, shocking. But uh, yeah, so I'm glad you're not going, man. Um, I mean, I know you know how the Delta variant is out here right now. And uh, if you follow if you follow Andy Block on Twitter. He has been ahead of every stage of the coronavirus, including the Delta variant, including the second wave. He knew about it before it was a presidential emergency, and he's just using regular number patterns. You know, the guy's a fucking math genius. If you guys don't know who Andy Block is, he was on the Blackjack team, the MIT team from the movie uh, 21. He was actually one of the guys who was on that team that that movie's based on. Uh, you know, the winner, winner, chicken dinner, Kevin Spacey movie. Uh, Andy Block is one of the math geniuses and uh, um, amazingly uh, great poker player. Uh, 
played heads up with Chip Reese in now the Chip Reese Invitational uh, mix game years ago, and it was just a battle. Heads up, heads up. They were there for nine hours. It was fucking insane. And uh, of course, Chip took it down because he's fucking Chip Reese, and he's played three tournaments in his life and won them all. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just an amazing player. And uh, if you just if you keep an eye on Andy Block's Twitter, he'll let you know. That's why I'm worried about AV12. Uh, because that's the next variant to come out, and uh, he's talking about it hitting in late November. I've been blessed with Andy being in my corner uh, this last year. I'm truly honored. Oh, that's right. You have connections to him. Nice. I mean, I'm not going to lock it. My hands are going to be too cold. It's fine. River is a six, and now we're in the same position. Do we want to check back? Bet 2560 or bet 3600? I think this is one where we're trying to get called by ace highs. Um I, I the, the, the the like I said the, the quiz is bugged. Um, I don't want to bet too small here. I, I think we can go for straight value with thirty six hundred. So that's what I'm clicking here when it says bet. It means thirty six hundred. So that's what I'm gonna do. We definitely want to put in a bet now, and I'm just using. The I got thirty six hundred points. <laughs> we don't want to go bigger because our hand. Best answer ten points <laughs> for twenty five sixty, but I got thirty six hundred points in the river. Yeah, this. This quiz is a bit bugged. <laughs> just isn't that good. It's not a hand we want to go bigger with. We'd go bigger with our jacks. Yeah. Um, that can get a value out of something like ace 10 or a worse jack or something like that. And you may feel by going to small sizing that we could get jammed up. Yeah, that, that, that was my fear is that I don't want to induce a bluff here. Uh, and this is right on the edge of it. Like, if this, if this bet was 2,000, I think we induced the bluff way too much. But I think we could just balance here with something like pocket sixes and play it the exact same way. Because when we have sixes and this player's been checking the turn in the river, it doesn't look like they have much. So, you know, by going small with sixes, you kind of can target getting called by something really light like an ace-10 or an ace-king, ace-queen, or maybe even ace-x, maybe ace-4, maybe ace-5 suited, something like that. Um, also, by betting sixes small, it now allows us to start bluffing hands like king-queen or eight-nine suited, or maybe a heart draw that we didn't want to bet the turn because we didn't want to get blown off. and. It's an important distinction. When we have king queen, we have blockers to ace king and ace queen. So the same bet can make a bad ace fold, like, you know, ace five suited or something like that, because they don't have enough to call us with. Like, ace king and ace queen are going to call here all day with this bet. But because if we had king queen, it's less likely for them to have it. I think the bet remains the same, because then we're getting ace highs out, you know, that we do beat and not over-risking versus ace-king and ace-queen, which will not fold to us here. Um, so hands like ace-5, you know, ace-7 suited, all those hands, ace-8 suited, that can that can squeeze preflop, now have to fold, versus the ace-king, which now has to call. Same, same bet, when we have a different hand, it blocks more. Because we have the pair here, we can bet and comfortably get called by the ace-king and ace-queen now. The ace-5 and ace-8 will still fold, but... Now we gain those calls because of this pair and not having king queen. Like if we had 10 9 here, I actually might go bigger because now it's a greater chance that he has ace queen and we can get called by that. We're just trying to get him off some sort of ace high, so we don't need to bet that big. Um, so that's if we had king nice queen, you say. A big bet and a small bet. And just make sure both of them are kind of balanced and protected and they both really understand what they're targeting and hoping to accomplish you know, what they're trying to fold out or what they're trying to get value out of. And uh, in this instance, it did get a fold. And this speaks to what Hand was doing. This is probably like a suited ace that didn't improve on the board. You know what I'm saying? Definitely wasn't the heart, so it's probably suited ace of spades. You know, ace eight, ace five, you know, ace three of spades can make all those three bets and then have to do this pattern. So betting the river obviously is the best move. And he's correct. In the smaller bet in that instance is better because we want to get called by the ace king and ace queen, which would not call a larger bet for pure value on the river. So it's a nuance that I have a leak on where my value betting range is too linear, meaning I'll only bet 
65 to 70 percent of the pot value range uh whether i'm trying to look like a value bluff or i'm trying to get an actual value get hand paid i should have range in there uh for being like 55 you know even 45 all the way up to like 80 percent for value when i'm trying to get called in scenarios like this so it's definitely a leak that i have that I'm glad that Faraz kind of brought it up. It's uh, interesting. And in a 215 online tournament, this situation is going to come up hundreds of times. It is 1.30. I, it is a play day today. I'm looking to come back and play at about 3, 3.30, somewhere in there. I haven't looked at the schedule yet, but definitely by 3.30 at the latest. So I'm going to pass you guys off to Dramatic DGen. And uh, don't forget, if you don't uh, come back for the play later, I'm on every single day. I haven't missed a day yet in 31 days of streaming uh, by noon for the Wake Up With Me. It's where we do these hand quizzes. We go over my hands from yesterday's. And we can just talk, hang out, and bullshit. Um, but yeah, that's every single day. Noon Pacific Standard Time. That's Vegas time. Uh, I like to say by noon because like today I started earlier. Uh, but usually start around 11.30 or noon. So I'll see you guys later today. Have a great day. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll win something tonight.